And now it's time for more of Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best Shimano. And by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray and rock god Rick Maxa. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here with rock god Rick Maxa. We're in the Mighty 1090 studio with Mr. John Island from Rancho Leonero in Baja's East Cape. Uh, we have IGFA representative and tournament director Bob Blum and dive expert Dan Walsh in the studio. And Bart Hall. Live from the Fred Hall Long Beach Show. Would you like me to review Bob Blum's uh, credentials once again? You know, I really would. I'd appreciate that. Okay, yeah. Tournament director, past past and present uh, IGFA world record holder and IGFA observer. (laughs) And, uh, yeah. Now, among other things, does the tournament, cor- former tournament winner, sure, oh, because sure. he had Carol with him at the tournament, does the Cortez C. Chubb record still stand? You're talking about the uh, Kyphosis el- elegans, that, that would the be rare and about, elusive yeah. fish that I had to travel all the way to Alijos Rocks to sure. catch. Yeah, is that still a standing record? It's been a standing record for two since 2006. So and nobody ha- has defeated your rudderfish. Nobody, is what you're saying nobody has caught a bigger rudderfish and submitted it to the. <laughs> and, and, and why do you think? They call them rudderfish. Well, the, the reason is is because they they used to follow the sailing ships to, to feed on scraps, and the, yeah. there's a, a number of them, uh, uh, different chubs, and uh, they looked alike. And I, I had to send pictures that Gary White had taken to uh, Milton Love at UC Santa Barbara to tell me which one it was. I yeah. think because the name Worthless Trash Fish just doesn't have as good a <laughs> ring to tell, it yeah, as just Rudder doesn't Fish go does. There, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Bob's the world record holder. He sure is. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest one on the books. Hey, hey speaking of uh, doctors and uh, fish guys, uh, our friend Bart, Dr. Larry Allen, the scientific fisherman, has come out with a new book. Oh, cool. That's fantastic. Have you had a chance to see it, Bart? Uh, not only have I had a chance to see it, all of us are going to buy it. And I, I once you see that book and you're an angler, you're going to want it too. And Larry will be at the Accurate Fishing Tackle Saltwater Tank, uh, which is uh, something that uh, we did in collaboration with the uh, California State University Northridge Near Shore Fishing Program. And uh, he's going to be signing autographs there. The book will be for sale at various retailers, I believe. I think Fisherman's Signing, I'm not sure. But um, he'll be there signing that book, and it's a fantastic book. Fantastic. It really is. It's, it's the most comprehensive and detailed, pictures everything, of fish on the West Coast that I have ever seen. It's so like it's a fantastic. ID type book or what? I, yeah, absolutely. Okay. 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 Identification book. Yeah. kind of thing. Every, every, and it's, Info, it's, the whole nine. It's, it's got it all. Awesome. On everything. That's I'll bet cool. it has the Cortez Sea Chub in there, too. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen it? Is it no, there? I haven't. Okay, we'll have to look that up, Bart. <laughs> so that's going to be at the salt at the saltwater tank. The scientific fisherman, Dr. Larry Allen, will be selling and autographing his book. Yeah, and any fish any fish we catch on the west coast is described there with a picture of it right next to it. So you you catch something, you want to look it up. I mean, it's right there. It's, it's right fantastic. there. Fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, it's really really good. Hey, Jim Salazar, our lobster guru, wanted me to remind our listeners that it is illegal to tail lobsters until you're ready to eat them now that means the the technically the description i made about tailing and freezing that lobster would be an illegal practice but i would have a hard time if uh, a dfw enforcement guy would come into my freezer and say well you're you're violating the law because you didn't eat this uh, as so but technically that's it's illegal to tail until you're ready to eat. Well, that's that's how I that's part of my preparation process. Yeah, like yeah, I I yeah. get ready to eat them by freezing them and you know letting them marinate. You just eat it later for quite yeah, some exactly. time. You know, like, yeah, part yeah part of the eating process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I I don't think they'd give you a ticket for that one. So <laughs> so uh, but the, thanks info, to Jim though, yep. thanks to Jim Salazar for pointing out that point. Now speaking of Jim Salazar, he'll be doing lobster seminars at the Long Beach and Del Mar shows, right? Yes, he is. He's on the uh, saltwater tank uh, giving seminars, uh, and uh, I uh, I think he might be. No, that's where he is. Yeah, on the saltwater tank. 
So uh, every day, um, just look it up online. You can, no one's going to remember the times, but go look it up online and, and or in the Western Outdoor News uh, show program when you yes. come in the door. And Jim's yep. one of our most uh, famous seminar speakers. We call him the lobster guru. He is the best. Uh, basic to advanced tactics and tips, including gear essentials, regulators, and cooking, all that stuff. He's going to talk about everything. Yeah, he can, and he talk about freezing, too. Absolutely. <laughs> he'll, talk, yeah. he'll, he'll teach you his methodology, what he uses. He'll be also in the Promar booth, too, so you can go by and see Ben and the guys at, in Promar and see Jim and, and quiz him about lobster uh, catching and fishing, diving, uh, whatever it may be. All right, Rick. And, and, and also, uh, Jason Morton from Promar, We'll be doing the freshwater version of that, uh, catching your freshwater lobster, a crawdads in the in the Eastern Sierra. In the Eastern nice. Sierra, yeah, which is a new yeah. kind of a a big deal up there. Really big it's one, cool. like that. lobster size. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and that cold water up there, delicious. Should have some down for the sporting chef. Maybe yeah, make a little, little not a flare. not a bad idea. Yeah, a little crawfish etouffee. Exactly. Yeah, you know, speaking of the sporting chef, we got so many things to cover. I know. Why, right. why we call things come up. The Sporting Chef Cafe will be in full force, and our friend Gary Schiebler will be introducing his new, will you call them albums or CDs, or what do you call them these albums. days? Albums. They're albums. Albums, okay. Uh, his new album uh, that's really, really good, and we featured some of the songs here on Let's Talk. Yeah, he did a great and job. Gary is a great guy. He's a great supporter, and uh, Gary will be doing quite a bit, um, and I, I believe he's also involved in the fashion show, right? He is involved in the fashion show, and Gary actually helps take care of our, our Facebook uh, side of things here. And uh, he, he's a great asset, and he's a really entertaining guy, very talented singer-songwriter. And he'll be uh, doing some songs on the stage, uh, both the Coast of Sporting Chef Cafe and, and, the, and also at the fashion show. And he'll be one of the uh, moderators of the fashion show, along with Captain David Bacon and uh, – and uh, my uh, niece, uh, Crystal Jameson, uh, from Budia. Wow. And also on the Coastal Sporting Chef Cafe, uh, we're going to have, you know, uh, Tommy Gomes will be showing you how to fillet in a, a whole fish. And he's going to do that at 4 o'clock Wednesday through Friday. And, and also he's going to do it at 4 o'clock on Saturday. He's gone on Sunday. But that's really great. Uh, I mean, we all think we're pretty good with knives and know how to fillet fish. But when you watch Tommy do it, it's a whole other world. Oh yeah, that's that's one of those things. Yeah, when you and there's very little tips and techniques you'll be able to pick up that's going to really improve your game. And there's just nothing like watching it happen. You know, somebody can tell yeah. you about it all day, but when you're sitting there watching somebody take that fish apart like that, it's you know you're going to pick up a lot. That's really cool. No doubt about it. Well, let's jump into those phones. They're packed up. They want to talk to John. They want to talk to Bart. Let's do it. Dave and Anza, you're up next on Let's Talk. Hook up, Dave. Thanks for hanging in with us. Hey, good morning, everybody. Say, I have uh, two questions for John Ireland there. First one, John, um, how's the grandson? How do you like playing grandpa? Good morning, Dave. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's great. It's great. You know, you, uh, you get all the good time, and then you turn him back. I don't have to change diapers, uh, so, so it's perfect. He's a big kid. Um, you know, his, his dad's half, half South Sea Islander, so he, he's, he's a big kid. I'm really looking forward to what's, spending time. What's the last name? Uh Taukanukafili, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so his name is John Ireland Taukanukafili. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, his dad is uh, is uh, South Sea Islander and, and, uh, and actually a, a prince, a Fijian pr uh, prince. His father is one of the ro royalty royalty of, uh, of Fiji. So so it's interesting to... Uh, to uh, they have him in the family and a oh, big, a beautiful, good-looking kid, and he's going to be a natural fisherman and diver and all the good stuff. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, you know, it's it's fun stuff. <laughs> I, I'm enjoying you. it. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. My grandson's two years old. He's the thrill of my life, and I've got a granddaughter, too, any day now. So. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. So, well, my other question for you, John, is um, I know they've got that new border crossing at the Tijuana Airport where you I, – I've never used it, but I guess you can basically walk across the border, and it's supposed to be a lot smoother. Have you had any of your customers using that and any feedback on how that's going? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's the ticket. It's actually coming back. My understanding is I haven't done it myself yet, but it's easier than uh, going to uh, going into Sky or San Diego Airport there, Lindbergh. Um, there's a, right from the the baggage claim. There's a door that you go through. And you just walk across, and there's a separate line for only people that fly on the on the airlines to to cross through the border to come back in the United States. So it's 
real simple. It's a going five, in and coming out. Going in and coming out. It's always easy going in. That was never a problem. Coming out with that line, you know, going across the border was just was just insane. Now it's just easy, easy, as easy as it can be. And that said, if you go and without a reservation, they've always got on um, Bolaris, they've always got seats available. Uh, if you go without a reservation and you just walk in there, it's seventy five bucks each way. Whoa! And that all, right. all my yeah, all my employees. That's how all of my employees fly back and forth. They, do, huh? and they just walk down, and sometimes it's even cheaper than that. I've heard them flying forty or fifty dollars. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Pretty amazing. Oh, and and it's opened up uh, much cheaper fares, not only out of Tijuana but also out of San Diego. You, you've yeah. always said a competition is what drives the prices down, and that was the case. I know Brandon, who I work with in the, the tackle store, he just came back from a trip. They were bass fishing down. And then they use the bridge for the first time, and he just said, "You would not believe how easy it is." I mean, yeah. you, they they had somebody drop them off, but I mean, there's very easy parking if you want to just drive yourself. You park on the U.S. side, you literally take the bridge across, and you're in the airport basically. And and coming home is just as easy because you would not believe it. And the going through customs, it's just the people that it, had landed. It's, it's just out of baggage claim. There's a door at baggage claim where you pick up that you just walk through and right right, right across the border, it's and big, it's yeah. it's a no brainer. And I believe deal. it's uh, if you pre buy it, it's 14 or 15, 15 bucks and 18 at the door or something like that each way. Yeah, I think they paid $15 to, to $15. do it. And he said it's just, you know, when you look at how fast you're across the board, he said the same thing. I mean, you know, b- between shuttles and times from, you know, don't get me wrong, there's nothing, at least living in San Diego, there's nothing easier than just driving right to Lindbergh Field and being done. But he said that their time was sp- was less in this, because there was there was just there was no lines, no baggage yeah. claim, no waiting for shuttles, and, just in and out. And if you're living in L.A. and Orange County, you know, it's an easy deal, too. The other thing, too, that it did is it opened access to Mexico City. There's multiple flights sure. a day out of Tijuana, right. every, a daily flight to Puerto Vallarta, a daily flight to Mazatlan. Uh, you know, so it's, it's opened worth, up a lot more avenues to it's worth different mentioning destinations in Mexico. That Carlos Slim owns the airline. Yeah. Every one of those airplanes are brand new. Yeah. And free cocktails. No. Free cocktails. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. No. They're charged. Not last time I I no. went. No. Oh yeah. They even charge for water. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they got the Southwest or the I don't know what that airline is. What Spirit? Some, Spirit I, I, deal going. Spirit. Yeah. I heard all those stories <laughs> about Spirit. It used to be free cocktails. Yeah, it used to be free cocktails. Oh. Anyway, hey Dave, thanks a lot for the call. We'll see you at the show. Appreciate that. All right. Thanks, hey, Dave. let's jump right back into the phones. This time we're going to talk to John. He's calling us from Huntington Beach. Hey John, welcome to the show. Hi John. Hello. Hi. I had a question for Bob Blum. Okay, go ahead. Hi, it's an honor to talk to you, Dr. Blum. Um, I had a question regarding world records. Is it possible, you know, for a local fisherman, and is it realistic to target a species of fish in Southern California for a world's record? You know, with El Nino, or is it totally unrealistic? Oh, it's quite realistic. Um, w- worldwide, there's about 40,000 different species of fish. So half of them freshwater, half of them saltwater. And, and all you have to do to catch a world record, all tackle world record, is for the fish to weigh one pound. And, the, and a lot of the fish that, that you could catch are fish that you catch when you're fishing for something else and what Ricky would call jug fish. Now, so, now let me ask you this. Uh, Ricky has been trying to and heavily pursuit of the world record for the lizard fish. Sure. Yes, it's a, is there a record? No, there isn't. It's it's an open record, and all he has to do is catch one that weighs one pound, and I'm sure he has done that. So that, he could be the world record for that. Another one that we catch often is called something called a tree fish. And, you know, There's uh, no record for a tree fish? No record for a tree fish. Uh, it's a, uh, one of the Sebastus uh, uh, rock cod fish. Uh, it has stripes on it, and uh, sometimes called a lipstick fish because it's uh, fish don't have lips, but where their lips are with Often is orange and pink. So fish like that are available. And here's another one that's available. For line cast fishing, the, the, uh, about five years ago, IGFA decided that the, the tuna we catch, uh, Thunus orientalis, is a separate species. And the 30 and 50 pound class is wide open. The, for for yellowfin tuna? Bluefin. bluefin. For bluefin tuna. For bluefin tuna. 30. Okay, it's a separate class from the eastern bluefin. Yes, and also separate from the southern bluefin. So all you have to do is catch one on uh, 30 pounds. Probably better off using 25 pound test because line always over test. And you could have a world record bluefin tuna. Wide open. Wide open. Okay, a little more respectable than the uh, lizard fish. I, 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 I have to tell you that. I would rather catch the flu <laughs> than, than catch the world catch record the lizard, lizard fish. Oh. <laughs> well, well Rick, Ricky's a, a, a great tournament fisherman. 
and, and, and I have found guys that are tourney fishermen don't, aren't interested in world records. And guys who chase world records don't fish tourneys. And, and though both of them fish IGFA rules and want to catch big fish, but they, they don't inter- react. There you go. Thanks a lot for the call this morning, John. <laughs> hey, all right. With that, it's time to find out what's biting out there. We got the man, your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hansen, on the line with our fishdope.com report. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Dave. Hey. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. I am going to go down in the book with the world record tree fish. I know right where they live. I'm going to wait two more days till it opens, and I'm going to go get me a world record. There you go. You're on. World record holder and your saltwater guy. There you go. There you go. Hey, we couldn't have wrote this script any better. It's happening, and it's happening everywhere. Catalina, very, very good yellowtail fishing. Lots of that bigger barracuda. There's been sign of sea bass on the back side. A lot of guys that are catching them aren't talking about it. There's really good bonita fishing on the front side of Catalina. We stumbled into a real good school of that bigger yellowtail. Uh, day before yesterday, we ended up getting one for four, and the sea lions were relentless there. Very good yellowtail fishing over at Clemente. I know the Thunderbird had a really good whack day before yesterday. He got 50 fish. Yesterday, he slowed down a little bit. He had nine, but... I mean, here we go, Fred Hall, tomorrow morning, we're all moving in there, and there's fish and biting pretty much everywhere down there in San Diego, bluefin tuna, yellowtail, up there in Marina del Rey, really good yellowtail fishing again on the yo-yo iron. We couldn't have wrote this script any better. We've been talking about it for three weeks. We knew it was going to break wide open this week because we're moving into Fred Hall tomorrow morning. So all I can tell you guys, if you're not involved in moving in the show tomorrow or Tuesday, you got to go fishing because I know Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you're all coming to the show to listen to me speak. Wow. That's cool, dude. That is yeah. way, way cool. So good. And, Fun uh, seminars. Yeah, looking forward to those seminars at the Fred Hall Long Beach Show, and uh, you'll be Del Mar too, right? Yes, sir. Both. And I'm down in Del Mar. I'm even bringing my buddy Todd Manster. We're both going to be Todd! Oh, be cool. Well, that's great. Hey, I'll tell you what. Fishdope.com is your source. They'll be at the Fred Hall Show with specials in the booth there. I'll bet Danny's even going to make a token appearance in that booth. What do you think, Dave? Oh, yeah. I was talking to him, and Jason has been working relentless. They have a brand-new booth, so it's not going to be the same old booth. they got a brand-new booth. You guys got to stop by and check it out. Yeah, Fishdope.com. Dave Hansen probably be hanging out there. A lot of other guys that uh, relate to there, and you can get special deals at the Fred Hall Show in the fishdope.com booth, along with that $20 off a new membership to uh, Fish Dope with using the code hookup now. And how do we find you, Dave? Well, guys, if you'd like me to come with you on your boat and teach you how to fish, where to fish, what to fish for, you give me a call at 949-374-0786. Or if you want to charter a beautiful hatteras and just go fishing with some of your buddies, you can also give me a call at that exact same number. And, guys, it's a beautiful morning. Kelly and I are just leaving the dock. I just waited to call in. We're going to go out there and see if we can catch a few bats today. All right. Good luck, we'll Dave. Dave. Appreciate that. And we'll see you on Wednesday at the show. Appreciate the call. All right, guys. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow morning, Rick. <laughs> I'll look forward to it. All He's right. always there early putting carpets down. Oh, yeah. okay. Always high five. Like, okay, it's on. You know, <laughs> get to see the the, the empty Tomorrow hall. morning, move in. I know. Crazy, Hard right? to believe. We're huh? going to be putting it down. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's jump right back into the phones. George and Grand Terrace. You're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, George. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Morning. Uh, I want to continue the comments uh, on Mark Gillette. We, about, I guess, a year before last, I got one of the awards for a trip on the Commander, and we used that trip last year because the Commander just wasn't <laughs> ready to go. They still had got all the yard work done on Great boat. They did a tremendous job on it. It's an easily fishable boat. Uh, the crew was wonderful. We went out and got uh, dolphin fish and uh, did a real good job on that. I just wanted to continue the comments on that. So it's on Mark. Yeah, thank you. Also got a question for uh, and a comment for Bart. Went into the website, Bart, and it's a tremendous website. If anybody hasn't gone in there, and looked at your website for the show, they should. It's just, it's inclusive, everything about it. After I got through reading it, I didn't know what I was going to ask you, but I do know now. Uh, your on the water boats, 
down there. Can you go through that again and how that works and whether we can buy tickets down there and all the rest of that? Well, actually, we don't have boats on the water this year. Um, so um, often we have the independence down there, but the independence is being repaired at the moment. We do, however, have uh, you can go to the Hyatt Lagoon and you can you can test uh, ride a Hobie Mirage uh, drive kayak, but we don't have any boats on the water this year. Oh, you. Uh, uh, very good. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. More of your phone calls, more great information. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup. It's time for Fred Hall Show, and we're on the Mighty 1090. Hey, everybody. This is Captain Dwayne Diego, four-pack charter captain, here to talk to you about Parker Boats and the good folks at West Coast Marine. When it came time to start Pinnacle Sport Fishing and get my own boat, there was only one choice. I wanted a Parker, and there's a real good reason for it, the fishability and seaworthiness. I've been fishing on Parkers for years now, and I know the abuse they can take. Parker Marine builds a heavy-duty, industrial-strength boat, probably overbuilt, but that's what I need when we're out 12 hours a day, over 300 days a year, running charters. The guys at West Coast Marine built me one heck of a fishing boat. From the custom tower with steering and throttle controls to the backup bait pump system. My Parker 2520 XLD will deliver me to the fishing grounds reliably and safe. Take it from me. If you're ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, honest deal, you need to see Kevin Kelly at West Coast Marine, located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa, or check them out and their inventory and information online at westcoastmarine.com. It's Fred Hall Show time. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Be sure to stop by the Fisherman's Landing Tackle booth. The best selection of saltwater tackle at the show, including Shimano, rods, reels, and accessories. No one has a better selection of Shimano product than Fisherman's Landing Tackle. A must-visit at this year's Fred Hall Show. Fisherman's Landing has been the choice of sport fishing anglers for decades, with the largest fleet of long-range boats worldwide. Complemented by Southern California's finest charter and open party fleet. Now is the time to book your long-range trips and charters, plus half-day trips aboard the Dolphin. Go to Fisherman'sLanding.com and see trip availability, and even book your trip online. Stop by or call Fisherman's Landing in San Diego and book now at Fisherman'sLanding.com. For East Cape Fishing, Jen Wren is known as the best. This is Mark Rayer. Great service. Top quality equipment, including all accurate reels, CalStar rods, and Cibran electronics, has put my immaculately maintained twin engine cruisers in a class of their own. For memories of a lifetime, just bring your hat and sunglasses, and we'll provide a fishing experience that will exceed your expectations. Our calendar's filling fast, so don't miss out. For packages, two live webcams, a weekly fishery report, and more, check out TeamGenRen.com. We pick up at all East Cape resorts, so let's go fishing. Fishing Cedros Island is getting better and better for the traveling anglers thanks to cedros tackle the tackle shop on the island is now offering full rod repair now with the addition of a new rod wrapping machine fixing guides tips and handles is a snap cedros tackle is also constantly expanding the tackle selections to meet the needs of the local fishermen and the traveling anglers with all the name brand and high quality items you would expect to find at your local shop back home cedros tackle has a full rental rod selection with phoenix rods and Daiwa reels so just leave your gear at home They just brought down fully outfitted Hobie kayaks to the island, and fishing has been fantastic. Construction on the deluxe Cedros Tackle Casita is nearly complete, so get ready to enjoy a great kayak vacation on beautiful Cedros Island with Jeff, Omar, and the gang. Visit CedrosTackle.com on the web, or for more info on trips, the Tackle Shop, or Cedros Island, or call Jeff at 760-412-2507. Here's John Ireland. For Rancho Leonero. Rancho Leonero is very family oriented. People have brought their children down, and now they're bringing their children. It's not unusual to have three generations of family at the hotel grandpa, dad, and uh, normally sons, sometimes daughters. The families come back year after year, and it's a safe place for the kids. It's small, it's intimate, right on the water, two miles of beachfront. The water's very shallow in front, there's no currents to speak of, no waves. We have child care, $10 a day for a babysitter. Security is high at Rancho Lanero. It's really unnecessary, but it adds a comfort level. And we really do encourage the families. It's a great place for family reunions, family get-togethers, weddings. We do it all. 1-800-646-2252. 646-Baja. And RanchoLanero.com. There's nowhere that I can think of to have the same atmosphere and the same experience that you get at Rancho Lanero. We love families. 
Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. All right. John Ireland from Rancho Leonero. I have a question for you. Uh, the Rancho Leonero booking office uh, is uh, available online as well as in the office. That's correct. You can actually book online? Yes, you can. Wow. Okay. Cool. And yeah, yeah. How do you know uh, what boat you get? How do you how do you decide you what can, boat well, you, you get? Can, you can reserve boats. You know, uh, n- really, truly, ninety percent of our guests are are repeaters. Yeah. At least of at least one time, and have their own favorite captain and their own favorite boat. Uh, so we do take reservations on the boats, and um, and uh, so you're guaranteed and confirmed. And and there's an advantage of booking earlier. Um, even if you were to book online, you know that the the, uh, the office genie and the office and Olivia are very informative, and, and they end up spending a lot of time with the guests. It's, you know, our product that we offer is, you know, you're not just staying in the hotel. It's no. all your activities, your diving, your fishing. So lots of questions involved in everything, and they do a great job oh, of, yeah. of uh, keeping everybody informed, letting you know what to expect. And, and the website is great. Live live uh, shot of Rancho Lane area. You can look at it right now to right. see what Gary was talking about exactly. this morning, about the beauty of the can get him to to clean the, you know, it, it, when it gets windy, if I can get them to clean the lens every day. <laughs> yeah, kind of one of those projects. After. But the, the the hotel opens back up on Tuesday. It sure does. Yeah, and there's a couple of things I want to mention. The uh, we've done we've done a number of things on the hotel, and, and one of those was we have all split air conditioners now. We were just discussing that, and and in all the rooms, including the old uh, room, small yeah, ones. No, no more wall units at all. They're all, all splits, which all are split. much more efficient. They're and much, much more, more efficient, much quieter, and, and colder. And and what I did was I bought air conditioners that are twice the size that I really needed, and it was an economic decision on my part because now you can run them at half speed. They don't. They're not running max all the time, and. And really, the complaints we get we're getting now is rooms get too cold. Too cold. <laughs> yeah, we've done a lot of Turn things like off. that. We've got new walk-in freezer. Um, we we just redone, sandblasted the pier, and and uh, we've added boats. Uh, uh, we really we've really been working on our program. Not not changing anything, just making it. Yeah. Better. When are you going, Bart? Well, we're gonna we we always decide that um, pretty much at uh, <laughs> at Long Beach and Del Mar. We get together with our crew. We all sit down and pull out our calendars and say, when can we go? And then we go ask John if those dates are available. And um, there's a, an article I wrote in uh, coming up in the show program. It talks about our trip from last year. I know Gary Bam's written some stuff about uh, Rancho Leonero, too. But if you get a chance, go, go to the show program and, and pick up that article. It tells you all about our, our fabulous trip last year. But every year is great. Every year is slightly different as far as the fishing goes. But it's always the same experience because we sit outside on that wonderful patio and watch the sun go down and eat great food and talk about what we did during the day, the stories and whatever. And, and uh, it's it's wonderful. And, and John and Jennifer are, are often there, and it's always nice to visit with them. And but it's basically their home, and that, that's what you feel like when you're in Rancho Leonero. You feel like they're going to their home, and it's really a great experience. Thanks, Bart. Thanks, Bart. And you've you've actually had the opportunity to bring the group down almost every month of the year now over the years, haven't you? Pretty much. We we springtime through summer into uh, we 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 were there once when there was a Chapasco going on. That might have been one of my favorite trips. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know fun. what's what's unique about Bart is Bart fishes inside. He likes the super pongas and likes to fish inshore and. And really, there's so much action inside. Oh yeah, uh, at, at, right out, right out in front. Yeah, Very we em- we like right. Yeah, and we emphasize we have a large fleet of super ponds. The largest fleet. The largest fleet Cape. on the on the East Cape. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so we we emphasize we like line, light line fishermen and inshore fishing, and that uh, that fits into Bart's program. Bart likes to fish inside and does well. Lots of species, he, he, huh, Bart? Indeed. Hey, let's talk to Captain Scott Mizell from the Condor out of Fisherman's Landing. Good morning, Scott. Wow. Morning, Pete. How you doing, man? Hey, doing great. You guys, that uh, that call and that fishing down there is pretty good. We had 109 of them nice grade yellows yesterday from like 14 to 26 pounds. Right on, Whoa, Scott. That's awesome. Nice, nice. Oh, uh, yeah. They're biting the yo-yo iron. Guys are getting them on the dropper loop. There's big schools of that yellow down there. It was really fun. And um, the Pacific Queen caught a nice blue fin tuna down there on one of those schools of yellowtails, of all things. How about that, huh? Did you guys see any sign of blue fin down there? We did. First thing in the morning when I turned the meters on, just racing to try to get to the hot spot, that yellowtail, I saw a nice up and down market, 40 fathoms, and 
damn near spun around and put some jigs in the water. <laughs> That's so cool, Scott. So Condor is doing day and a half colonnet trips out of Fisherman's Landing now. Yeah, we're leaving at 8 p.m. Friday nights, getting down there and having a great day. There's plenty of rockfish to go with it if you like to catch lings and reds. It's, it, it's, just, it's a good time down there. And that was the most fun I've had in February since not being on a ski slope. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, tell us how we can book the Condor. 619-221-8500 or fishermanslanding.com. Ask for the 90-foot condor, and we'll get you down there on some of this August, I mean, February action. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, it's a, and it is a big steel boat, super comfortable, and, uh, and man, it, uh, it, it catches Rides fish. Rides great, yeah. doesn't right, Scott. That's oh, awesome yeah. news. Coming and, uh, up the coast from down there is not a problem on the Big Bird. We go right through and <laughs> get you home. Indeed. Nice. Are you going to be at Fred All Long Beach? You know, we got some work to do. We're still trying to do some work on the boat to get ready for the upcoming summer, which I think is going to be absolutely insane. Um, so I don't think I'm going to make it up there. All Unless right. If you guys want me to come by the booth, I'll come up and say hi. All right. Well, we'll see you up there, and uh, and indeed, and get on the Condor on Friday night. Go fishing, because Ricky and I wish we were going to be there. Soon. All right. Nice <laughs> to hear see from you, Scott. Scott. Appreciate the report this morning. Man, that fishing at Colonnette. Unbelievable. It, it has been crazy. I mean, yeah. all year long, there's been fantastic yellowtail fishing. We're, it's one of those things where we're getting jaded because when they'll have their quote sl, un, you know quote unquote slow trips, they're forty, they're forty, or you know, well we only had they only had thirty yellows, and then right back there the next week, a hundred on this boat, a hundred and ten yeah. on that boat, and nice ones. Bart, you think people are going to be excited about going fishing this year at the show? Well, I think that the, one of the great things about a Fred Hall show is the fact that large numbers of anglers assemble in one place, which doesn't happen often in your life. You know, you can go on a, any of these boats we're talking about, you're not going to have more than 60 people on it. And here you'll get in the room with tens of thousands of people, and there'll be a lot of stories told about the great fishing we've had over the last 18 months. And that's the part that I'm pretty excited about, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, no indeed, doubt. it's going to be fun. Well, let's go ahead and jump into those phones, Rick. You got it. How about this time we talk to Dennis, who's calling us from San Diego. Hi, Dennis. Welcome to the show. Dennis from San Diego, good morning. All right, good morning. I, I just had a question uh, a couple of months ago. You got you had a uh, person on your show that's going to be at Fred Hall Boat Show. I don't know if it's going to be Long Beach or San Diego, but he represented an organization, and you told us that he would teach us how to uh, use a device to release the fish. Yes, so uh, Noah... N-O-A-A, the feds, will be there, and they actually are going to give away some of the release tools, I think, to the first uh, 60 people. Is that right, Bart? Uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, Randy from Rockleys will most likely be there. Does he have a booth this year? Um, uh, I, I'm not sure. I don't have that list in yeah. front of me. but uh, You don't know be... all 500 exhibitors <laughs> off the top, top of your hand? I really don't. Uh, I, I believe so, but I don't know. I will know by the time the next break's over. Okay, very good. Uh, but, yeah, so Noah, uh, that was Craig Heber, who, congratulations to our friend yeah. Craig, got a new job with the Nature Conservancy. He's going to be doing some great work in the uh, Middle Pacific and uh, take a little leave of absence from Noah. So I want to say what congratulations to National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So it's the federal government's side. I'm of... glad you knew that because I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, really? okay, yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. It's where you go to get weather yeah. info. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right. How about we jump right back into them and talk to Cliff. Call us from Lakewood. Hey, Cliff, welcome to the show. Hi, good morning, guys. How are you guys doing this morning? Great. Good. Yeah, Mark, uh, my grandson was really impressed with the loggers last year or the year before, and he got a little seat. So he keeps asking me, are those loggers going to be coming back to the show? I, I'm afraid I couldn't hear what you the said. The lumberjacks. Are they lumberjacks? Yeah, the lumberjacks. Yeah. The lumberjacks will be at the San Diego show. They will not be at the Long Beach show. At the Long Beach show, we have a guy called Frank Eddington Jr., the Razzle Dazzle Archer. And what he does is, uh, Eric McCauley, one of our staff, throws these little tiny baby aspirin into the air, and he shoots them out of the air from, with, a, with a bow and arrow behind his back. Come get out of, get out of oh, yeah. here. Yeah, that's what's going to be at Long Beach. And then in San Diego, we will have the Paul Bunyan Lumberjack Show back down there in San Diego. Sponsored by the Ford uh, dealers? Both shows. Oh, the San Diego County Ford dealers bring us the Paul Bunyan Lumberjack Show every year. And uh, we bring you the Razzle Dazzle Archer. So. There you that's go. Awesome. That's right great. On, hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right. How about next up? We talked to Doug. He's calling us from Montebello. Hey, Doug. Morning, Doug. 
Hi, uh, this guy has a uh, question for the the world record footfish. What are you supposed to weigh it at, and then how much paperwork is there afterwards? Uh, you, you can get a form from the – download a form from uh, IGFA, uh, fill it out. It has to, uh, witnesses, and um, you, you need an official weigher. And uh, in San Diego, uh, Sean is the official weight master. And you can take it official. You have to take it where there's a certified scale. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'd be a certified scale. Is that at Fisherman's Processing or at Fisherman's Landing? I mean, Fisherman's Landing, we definitely Both. have a scale. Yeah. Yes. We have a certified scale to landing, as, as I'm sure most landings do. But yeah, yeah. We, we, we have one there. San Diego Marlin Club. Yeah, Marlin there's Club's quite a few. Dana, yeah. Dana Landing Market over Dana Mission Bay. They, they have a certified scale. scale. Yeah. All right. Very good. Thanks a lot for the call. All right. How about next up? We talk to Wyatt. Calling us from Long Beach. Hi, Wyatt. Good morning, guys. Morning, morning. Wyatt. Uh, so I recently won a ticket on the San, Di San Diego from you guys, nice. and I was wondering if I used it in the summer, would I need to look into getting a passport? Yes. Yeah. You will need a passport to go on the San Diego. Yeah, all trips that are going into Mexico that fish within 12 miles of the coast, which virtually all of the three-quarter day trips are going to be doing, at least out of San Diego, and the San, the San Diego certainly one of them, everyone's got to have a passport. So get it now, get, you know, that way when the summertime rolls around, you're not bummed because you don't have it. So Indeed. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning, 877-792-1090, the first line that's been open yeah. all morning, 877 877- 792-1090. Ruben from Los Angeles. You're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. What's up, Ruben? Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, gentlemen. I am so amped about fishing. We've got uh, this barracuda coming in, and I'm dying to flop one on the deck. And, Bart, I'm, I'm going to book a charter uh, at the Fred Hall show this Thursday, so I am just uh, as happy as can be. The eagle will fly at the Fred Hall show. <laughs> That's good news. All right. excited, yeah, Ruben. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right. How about Dennis from Santa Clarita up next on the show? Hi, Ru Dennis. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, I'd just like to share a past memory of the Fred Hall Show, if I could. Please. I've been, I've been going with, with uh, my father for over 40 years to the show. And one of the memories that stand out was back when they had a sport fishing boat and they had a fighting chair in the back with like a Penn International 130, and they had that thing hooked up to a winch. And as a kid, I remember sitting in the back of that sport fishing boat, pumping on, you know, a big old fish. And it was just awesome. They used to have movie stars where you could get your autograph signed. And I tell you, I've been looking forward to this show for many, many years. All and right. Just thankful well, you know, for, for that brings all your work. Memories, memories for me, too. You know, I just found a picture of me. When I was eight years old, dressed up like a cowboy with Roy Rogers promoting the show when we were back at the Pan Pacific Auditorium in the, in the 50s. And, Dan was uh, talking about that, and it was the Pan Pacific Pan Auditorium. Pacific. Uh, yeah. What years were those, Bart? Well, we started in uh, 46 at the Gilmore Stadium, and then I think two years later moved into the Pan Pacific, and were there for quite a while before we outgrew that building and moved over to the Great Western Exhibit Center, which is no longer there. Yes. But it was... Uh, it was a lot yeah. of fun those early days. This, of course, is our 70th anniversary, so there's 70th a lot of memories. Anniversary. Yeah, I got, I got a lot going in my mind. I remember that fighting chair, too. That was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've done a lot of fun things over the years, and it's, it's always a challenge to make it more fun year after year, but I think we've managed to do it so far, knock on wood, and, and uh, we're looking forward to another great one this year. I mean, some of my earliest memories are going to Fred Hall show with Dad and waiting in line to go fish in the trout pond. Like, I mean, I, I remember that like as far back as I can. Like, that was such a big deal. Like, yeah. I loved doing that. Well, you know what's what's amazing is here we um, we in the industry live and breathe this every single day. But I, I tell you, I'm excited about the Long Beach show, man. I can't wait. I mean, there's so much stuff to do. I'm gonna be doing some shopping and seeing and meeting, seeing people. It's kind of like. Like uh, the beginning party of the year for all fishermen. No doubt. And hunters, too. Yeah. And divers. Yeah, it, yeah <laughs> it is. And, you know, you, you're you right, though, Rick. You go out there, you can still see the same looks on those kids' faces as they're waiting to go yeah. in line to go fish those trout. You bet. They're every bit as excited as we were when we were kids. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, you get to see the legacy, the 70-year legacy of fishing uh, here. And, and that's the beauty of seeing all these anglers assembled together and their families. You know, we don't see that when it's just a bunch of, of, you know, hardcore guys out there. You get to see the continuation 
of the of the joy of fishing and outdoor recreation, and that's the beauty of the shows. I am so excited. Hey, uh, okay, Dennis, bye. are you coming down from Santa Clarita to go to the show? Oh, you bet I won't miss it. I'll be taking my uh, 12-year-old grandson with me this year. Fantastic. Share awesome. that legacy. Come on by the Let's Talk Hookup booth. We'll see you at the show. All right. Hey guys. Thanks a lot. All right. Hey, let's jump right back into the phones. Pete in Canyon Lake. You're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Pete. Good morning. Hey, how are you doing? Thanks for taking my call. Hey, a couple quick questions. Just wondering, a uh, question for John. Wondering when Marlin season is down in Mexico, and then are there, are there you know, you have package deals as far as the room rates and pongas and so forth? Uh, hi, yeah. hi, Pete. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Marlin Marlin is our, our game, and pretty much year-round. Stripe Marlin, uh, last few years it's been our most prolific fish, pretty much guaranteed, especially in the spring. Um, it's uh, normal for boats to release two or three a day in the springtime, and, and, and sometimes many more than that. This year's uh, this past year has been kind of interesting because uh, irregardless of the time of year, there's been a real mix of sailfish in with them. But uh, year-round, we've got lots of marlin, and, and close, too. You know, it's a, it, uh, right from a 10-minute boat ride from the front of the hotel, just right there on the, the bank off of La Rivera, is very, very productive with the billfish. Yeah, and what about packages? And, and packages, the, our packages, we, have, we offer certain specials. In fact, we offer our best special is our show special that we run for the for, uh, Fred Hall shows, um, and that'll, that will be available through the end of the Del Mar show if you're interested in, uh, in substantial discounts on the packages. Otherwise, uh, the prices are very reasonable, and it really depends on how many boats or how many days you want to fish, what type of room you want. But overall, it really is a fishing bargain. We're, there, there's, uh, in Cabela's, there's only two hotels in Mexico, the Cabela's books. They're tough. But they're tough, tough, tough. And uh, the best it has, best on the, I was looking at it, I was at the Las Vegas uh, Safari Club show, and it had the best bargain in the book, Rancho Land. Really? Yes. Wow. It, it did. I don't so know cool. how I felt about that or not, but at the end <laughs> of the day, for blue water fishing, I don't think there's much better deal than fishing any of the hotels yeah. in the East Cape. And come down and join us for our uh, Let's Talk Hookup Tournament in June. Great time of the year and uh, lots of prizes, including $1,000 cash. Absolutely. And the best Tournament director, Carol Blum, will be there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for the Thanks, call Pete. this morning. Come to the Appreci- show and check you out. Then. Appreciate hey, that. See you there, Pete. Hey, a special bonus guy here, the cast man. What's up, cast man? Hey, good morning, Bart. Good morning, John. I just, Hi, uh, Richard. Just wanted to make a mention that young man that called regarding uh, passport. Uh, just advise all the listeners, if they're traveling out of the country with a child, they need to have both parents – Especially if only one parent's going, both parents have to have a uh, certified letter or notarized letter to allow that person to take that child out of the country. It's kind of awful when you get to the airport thinking you're okay, and all of a sudden, no, you need to have this uh, notarized letter. So make sure uh, that you get the other parents saying it's okay, a notarized letter that you're able to take the uh, child out of the country. Otherwise, that's it. Talk to you guys at the show. Okay, (laughs) Castman, we'll see you in the booth. Very good information. So if you're going down with, let's say, your dad and you're under 18, you're a minor, uh, you get a certified letter from the other, uh, from the mom, Yep. and uh, take that with you. First trip to Rancho Lanero, dad and I had that exact same thing happen. Same scenario. And And they got turned away. Well, that was was like the the older days um, where it was, well... If you pay fifty dollars, then we can notarize this letter saying it's okay. Oh, but I don't. But I don't, I, don't that think, Mexico? I don't think that exists anymore. Yeah, yeah they used to. Voters registration, yeah. you could get down pretty easily. Yeah. That said, it's much easier to get a passport now than it used to be. Just at your local, the closest post office to you, you can make a reservation and go in and do it. And it takes a half an hour. And I, I, I forget how much are easy. it costs. But They're the certified letter is a, is a good one, though. Oh, no, no, no. You have, have to have that. Yeah, yeah. Even in Mexico, if you're flying out of oh, Tijuana? absolutely. I know I used to take Jeannie, my daughter, back and <laughs> forth. So I, I had to have a letter from uh, my ex-wife, you know. Yeah. So it was okay. It was okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a I, must. It's I remember must. those $50 days. It was like, oh, I'm sorry, my friend. You're not going to Mexico today. 
However, yes, exactly. you're very fortunate today because an official of the Mexican government has arrived at the airport, and for fifty dollars you'll be able to go. But they don't do that anymore. Yeah, it's not like actually it wasn't official; it was a notary. All you needed, you needed to notarize letters. That was it. He goes, if you hit close, close. I, I totally remember them saying that to Dad. If you promise you're not stealing them and pay fifty dollars this letter, then then it's okay. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, it's that's good times. Let's try and sneak in one more call. You got it, man. How about we talk to Hank, he's calling us from Long Beach. Hi, Hank. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Hank. Hey. Hello, Hank. Oh, uh, I was wondering what tide do you guys prefer to fish in or bay for spotted bay bass? Inner bay for spotted bay bass. When the tide is moving, uh, that's the key. It's all about tidal movement. I li- I'd say incoming tide more than four feet would be my all-time favorite. More than four, less than seven. That's, yeah. that's super primo for me. Good times. Hey, have a great time. Thanks a lot for the call. I think we can sneak in one more. You got it. How about we do Wayne from Point Loma then? Hi, Wayne. Welcome to the show. Good Good morning. Quick question for Bart. Hey, Bart, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Hey, uh, since your team lost to my team twice last <laughs> football season, do I get two martinis at Del Mar? <laughs> Uh, I was afraid of that call. Yes, I'm afraid that's correct. <laughs> looking, looking forward to it. Great show always. All right. Look forward to you, Bart. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Okay, I think we can get one more in. You got here. it. We'll do Jerry from Garden Grove. What's up, Jerry? Good morning, Jerry. Hey, good morning, Ricky. Hey, Bart. Um, is Friends of Rollo going to have that wheel that you spin? Oh, yeah. Dennis Friends of Rollo. And Friends of Rollo has gone overboard this year. They're there are so many great prizes, and uh, the wheel will be there, and, and you need to go by and support Friends of Rollo. You know, that is one of the greatest things we have going for taking kids fishing, and, and they will be there strong with, uh, with a lot of great prizes. You yeah, the, the raffle this ball. year is gigantic. A uh, $10 ticket, you could win a trip to Rancho Leonero. Uh, you could tri- win a trip to Hawaii and win a trip to Alaska uh, 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 on the journeyman at Puerto Vallarta, Port Laura, um, Laura Players. I mean, a bunch of stuff. So cool. John Petty Gold. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, there's a lot. It's for 10 bucks. And the best part of it is you're taking kids fishing. And even for that $10, even if you don't win the brink license, you put ten dollars down. You're going to get. You're going to win something worth more than ten dollars. So it's it's a fabulous thing. You need to go by there and do it. It, it. Yeah, for sure. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Speaking of Fred Hall show, when we come back, we're going to find out who's got two tickets going to the show. You stay tuned. More Let's Talk Hook Up coming your way on the Mighty 1090. Start 2016 strong with Yamaha's legendary reliability sales event. From January 1st through March 31st, purchase an eligible new Yamaha four-stroke outboard and choose either two free years of limited warranty coverage or up to $1,500 in dealer credit. Yes, that's up to $1,500 in dealer credit towards the purchase of goods or services from your authorized participating Yamaha outboards dealer or two additional years of Yamaha extended service on top of your three-year four-stroke factory limited warranty for no extra cost. That's a total of five years of warranty coverage and an MSRP value of up to $23,000. That's right. Eligible new 2.5 to 300 horsepower four strokes include a choice of two free years of Yamaha extended service or up to $1,500 in dealer credit, but only during Yamaha's legendary reliability sales event. Reliability starts here. Yamaha. Visit your nearest Yamaha Outboards dealer today. Offer ends March 31st, 2020. 2016. Subject to change at any time. Other restrictions and conditions apply. See authorized participating Yamaha Outboard dealers for details. This promotion cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. This is Captain Art Taylor of the 95-Foot Searcher. Team Searcher would like to thank all of our great customers for their support in our fantastic 2015 season. The Searcher has a fantastic crew, great food, air-conditioned cabins and galley, satellite TV, and an RSW system to preserve your catch. Our 2000 2016 schedule is out, so don't miss the boat. Book your trip online at searchersportfishing.com or call Celia and Jen at 619-226-2403. That's 619-226-2403. Hey, this is Captain Paul Hebert from the Wicked Pissa. My brother Bruce and I make a living catching giant bluefin tuna. In fact, I wouldn't even go fishing with any other sunglasses in Maui Jim. Put a pair of Maui Jims on it. Instantly, the glare is gone, the UV that can damage your eyes is gone, the ocean's true colors come shining through like never before. And with more contrast and clarity, you can see the bluefin at that critical time. Take it from me. Try a pair at your local tackle shop 
or check out MauiJim.com. You won't believe your eyes. <laughs> Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half, three quarter, and full day trips available. Check out the full service tackle store at Seaforth Sport. Sport fishing, and it's all run by fishermen for fishermen. 1717 Quivera Road, just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay. Book online at seaforthlanding.com. XFRS 1090 AM, Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Oh, right. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090 Era. The big winner of the two tickets going to the Fred Hall Show. Your choice, Long Beach or Del Mar, is going to John in Long Beach. And i got a feeling he's probably going to want to go to Long Beach. Yeah, I, I think so. Which starts John. this Wednesday. And John Ireland from Rancho Lanero, you'll be there? I will be there every yep. day. I'm looking forward every to it. Every day too. in the Rancho Lanero booth, which is right behind the Let's Talk Hook Up booth. You find Let's Talk Hook Up. You'll find Rancho Lane Arrow. You find Rancho Lane Arrow. You'll find Let's Talk Cook Up right there we're, we're in the middle of the find. show there, we're in the main right. hall there. And if we want to book a trip, go on our trip uh, with uh, tournament director Carol Blum and his assi- her assist- lovely assistant, <laughs> Dr. Bob Blum. How do we do that? Thanks, Pete. 800-646-2252 or RanchoLaneArrow.com. All right. Look forward to the show very much. Look forward to seeing you in the booth. Uh, there, Mr. Dr. Baum and uh, Carol, and thank you for help, uh, helping us out, and thanks, Dan, and for Dan. coming in to talk about diving with us. We appreciate that very much. Thank you, you going to be at the show, Dan? I will be at the show, so I'll see you all there. Can't yeah. wait. Helping yeah. out with the diving guys. I hope so. Yeah. Hope should indeed. be there. All right. And, Bart, give us the details. How do we get to the show? What do we do? And where I'm, do we go? I'm going to go through this really fast. We're returning. The fashion show is coming back this year. The Hook, Line, and Sinker Fashion Show presented by Extra Tough every day. Don't miss the Savage Gear Bath Tank, the Accurate Saltwater Tank, the Lawrence Learning Center, Costa Sporting Chef Cafe, Ram Ultimate Air Dogs, Cousins Tackle Seminar Stage, uh, DF Keys Casting, Salt Casting on the Lagoon with a, a vet in Shimano, the Shimano Reel Repair, Eiserlong Knot Tying, the Kidfish Tree Crop Pond by Mammoth Lakes, the Hyatt Lagoon for Hobie Kayaks Test Rides, and the Hobie Kayak. Seminar room, and I'm running out of air. You just go online to find everything or pick up your copy of Western Outdoor News Show Program when you come to the show. All right, Bart, warm it up for us. We'll see you up there Wednesday, 1 p.m. It, the, show, the door is open, right? Uh, 1 p.m. Wednesday through Friday, 1 to 9. It's 10 to 8.30 on Saturday, 10 to 7 on Sunday. Uh, our live broadcast, of course, at the Hyatt on Saturday and Sunday mornings and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, indeed. And speaking of which, uh, next Saturday, live from the Higher Regency in Long Beach, with a special panel of Department of Fish and Wildlife executives, including Director Chuck Bonham. We have a lot of questions I have. I know Ricky has. Oh. And you can ask them, too, right there at the Hyatt Regency. And then Sunday, again from the Hyatt Regency, uh, Seth from Kingfisher Charters, Mark from Inland Boat Center, John from Mammoth Lakes, and Tim Lockwood, the hunter guy that Bart was referring to. And, of course, Bart Hall will be a part of both shows. Thanks for listening. Adam and Ryan, you're great. On the other side of the glass, we sure appreciate your help. And we'll see you next Saturday and Sunday right back here on the Mighty 1090.